Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. We just finished a cabin in Sevier County. Now this is a short-term rental cabin. And basically what happened was the owner was concerned about, you know, the water, intrusion, humidity, different things like that. So we went ahead and did a platinum package on this project. So we wanted to walk you through and show you what we did. So if you're new to Crawl Space Ninja, we talk about everything related to crawl space encapsulation, waterproofing, and indoor air quality. We hope you'll subscribe to our channel, ring that notifications bell, follow us on Facebook. Make sure you check out our DIY store and our franchise opportunity. The first thing I want to show you is obviously the dehumidifier. We uh, decided to put in an April Air E70 dehumidifier. Fairly small crawl space, a little less than 700 square feet. This is a, a great product for this. It's a, it's a small dehumidifier. And I love that, they, that April Air gives you these collars because not only could you duct it if needed, but it's a good way to carry it too. It really uh, disperses the weight pretty good if you decide you want to carry it in here. Um, but obviously April Air is a great company. We, we are uh, exclusively install April Air dehumidifiers and uh, this product, and then we got it running into our condensate pump. We want to make sure the humidity levels are kept below 60%. We typically set the dehumidifier on 50%, so that way there's a little bit of margin of error there. We don't want it to be right at 60. We'd rather have it below 55, between 45 and 50%. So we feel like 50% relative humidity setting is a good setting for us. Now, as I mentioned, this cabin had some standing water uh, coming through. It wasn't necessarily flooded, but the foundation walls were moist and we just wanted to, to, to install the sump pump and the interior water management system in the event that it does see flooding in the future. And there's an interesting article written by HUD, uh, Housing and Urban Development, and uh, I'll try to put a link to that down below. But there is an interesting article that talks about how if the dirt outside of the crawl space is higher than the inside, they recommend an interior water management system, whether there is evidence of standing water or water intrusion or not. Because if you think about it, it's not just the water making it from the outside in, but you also have a ground that is lower and which means it's closer to the water table. So in Sevier County, this is in Wares Valley, which is prone to some flooding and different things like that. There's a chance that the water could percolate up from the ground level and it may not even make its way in from the outside. So we just went ahead and precautionary put in that water management system. So that way it addresses any potential flooding issue in the future. This is a 4,800 gallon per hour pump, should be uh, able to handle whatever's thrown at it. We've got the Dranger drain installed. As you can see, this is our dehumidifier line. So that way we're draining in to our sump pump. The Dranger drain allows water to go in, but also uh, does not allow potential radon to pop out. This is not an excuse not to have a radon mitigation system if you have radon, but it's just a nice little feature because these uh, lids need to be sealed but if for some reason you get a plumbing leak back in the corner or something like that and that water makes its way to this side it's also going to allow that plumbing leak to make its way into the sump pump so that you don't fill up your crawl space like a swimming pool the other thing i want to point out is that you take your one and a half inch line up we put a coupling so that way when we maintenance the sump pump it's just uh, easier to access it and then we bring it up to the joist and secure it because these things are like little jet propulsion engines. If they kick on, they could actually shoot out of the uh, sump pump basin. We've seen companies that will go out and 90 straight out the wall and it'll actually break that one and a half inch line in some cases. So we like to secure it to the joist, bring it back, and then we go out below ground outside the crawl space to a, a pop of emitter out in the yard to make sure that the water is draining properly. So this crawl space, as I mentioned before, it, the humidity was not too bad. It was in the 50% range, but we just precautionarily uh, went ahead and soda blasted this crawl space. And as you can see, there's a white tracer on all the joists in the subfloor. That is the X70 protectant so that it gives it a, a mold warranty that we uh, provide. But the other thing I wanted to share with you, not only did we soda blast and clean all the wood and and apply the Anabec products but we also made sure that we sealed all the vents but one obviously uh, as you can see we use our r10 termite resistant foam board to also seal the vents and uh, put the uh, insulation behind the plastic but it's also great for rim joist insulation um, so this is a very efficient crawl space we've got you know to code r10 foam board we've got all the vents sealed but the one 
and then we've got our rim joist insulation because the uh, stack effect inside the home will, uh, according to buildingscience.com, allow that every time the AC kicks on, it causes that air to move up the walls of the, of the home out of the crawl space. So this will help eliminate uh, a lot of that drafts that you'll feel inside the house. Rim joist insulation is a great investment. Um, so that's, that's the way we do it. Uh, some companies will spray foam the entire rim joist. We don't really like that. Uh, first of all, it's pretty messy, but secondly, if you have to cut it out or get access to that for some reason, it's just easier to pop out the foam board. And then the active ventilation system is in the back of the crawl space to move that one CFM of air for every 50 square feet per the EPA to make sure that this doesn't become a stale air environment that can build up soil gases. So one thing I wanted to point out about the plastic is we've got the fasteners up top and then that uh, drapes down and then the plastic comes to about here. This plastic comes to here and then we bring our floor plastic over and then we have our seam here. So that way we've got, uh, like I said, there's not a lot of standing water coming from the outside, but it does make it harder if there is for that water to travel over here and then come up and then come out the seam. A lot of companies, they'll just put the joints together and then they'll tape. And that's a, a good way to create some uh, water intrusion. So it's better to have, you know, it's about a 12 inch overlap, maybe a little more. Um, it's better to have that kind of overlap so that way it uh, has a harder time traveling back and getting out of this seam tape right here. So the ninjas did a really good job of making sure this was one piece of plastic. Another thing you might consider doing is maybe uh, create bringing the floor plastic all the way up to here and then creating a seam tape. But remember, adhesives, tapes, things like that typically fail. So there is an opportunity for that tape to separate and then fall and then you lose your watertight integrity. So that's why we, we normally do the seam taping on the ground, of course, except for when we bring the plastic together on the wall, there'll be a strip of tape down the wall. And of course, as you can see, this uh, uh, crawl space has a lot of the HVAC ductwork down here. So one of the things we like to do, um, especially if you're planning on soda blasting, is we like to spray foam around the boot of the HVAC duct that goes up into the home. So that way, again, it keeps that air leakage. But for us, it also helps to minimize the amount of soda that can get in. It's really impossible to keep all of the soda out of the house. I mean, this is about 130 PSI. Uh, soda is really fine. So some of it does get into the ductwork and potentially up around the boots and things of the home. Um, but we do a pretty good job of minimizing all that with some HEPA air scrubbers up in the house and then uh, sealing off these ducts, turning off the HVAC while we're soda blasting, but make sure that if you, uh, whether your crawl space is encapsulated or not, you might want to consider uh, spray foaming or insulating around those boots if, if you can, but also make sure the wood is dry around those boots before you apply any spray foam, because if you just put spray foam around them, you could trap that moisture in and rot out that area. Okay, one indication that you might have a water problem in the crawl space without coming down to the crawl space is if, especially if you have hardwood, you can take that register off and kind of rub your hand along where that hardwood meets that register. And if you notice it cupping, uh, then that's a good indication that you might have some uh, moisture problems down around the crawl space because typically you're gonna see more moisture around the HVAC duct and boots than you would anywhere else because the, of the condensation factor of the dew point. Last two things I want to point out in this crawl space. Number one, we had to install a jack post right here. A very simple installation, but this uh, beam did not rest or does not rest on the outer foundation wall, which I'm not sure why it doesn't. Um, so we installed this uh, jack post or post jack, whatever you want to call it, depending on what part of the country you're in. So that way it offers a little bit more floor support for this side of the house. The other side is resting on the outer foundation wall, but this side is not. And then of course, this is a sealing uh, the inside of the HVAC trunk lines that come in. You can see a little, maybe in the camera, a little bit of light uh, that's shining through right there. That's because they had a new HVAC system installed and they haven't put that sheet metal around uh, to join the HVAC to the house yet. So you're seeing a lot of the sunlight come through. But anyway, overall, it, they did a great job. Uh, you can see we got some pipes that come under the crawl space, you got your sewer line, you can see how they kind of did that as well to, to make sure that uh, watertight integrity is there. Um, I thought the ninjas did a great job, so 
I'm Michael Church with Crawl Space Ninja. We hope you make it a happy and blessed day, and we'll see you later.